Welcome here to our Western Aha webinar on our uh, way to S4 transformation. Um, my name is Michael Jakob. I'm director for the SAP S4 HANA uh, topic here in DACH. I have a few colleagues with me. Uh, you see on here on our intro slide, everybody is going to introduce himself. So we don't lose too much time. Let's uh, start with uh, the webinar. So if you skip it next to the next slide, let's talk about the agenda. Yes, of course. So thanks. So I give you a short welcome here, a short introduction who Western AHA is. Then we talk about the right approach to your transformation to SAP S4 HANA, uh, the why that it will be done by Alexander Krebe. Uh, which will take around 25 minutes and we have a slot around the what um, with uh, SAP uh, we have Michael Skolelek on the call uh, with a, a 25 minutes uh, slot and then we have a demo on our Signavi offering which will take around 15 minutes and then we have a slot of 25 minutes where we uh, show with SNP what could be a right approach between Greenfield and Brownfield, which will take 25 minutes. And finally, I will tell about some offerings, how we can start with you with a journey uh, and uh, how we do that in 10 minutes. And then we have uh, 10 minutes time to discuss at the end. If you have questions uh, where, uh, during the webinar, please uh, send a chat message or we talk about it in the end. A short introduction on Westernacher, who we are. Yeah, Westernacher is leading the digital supply chain. We are specialists in digital supply chain. This is our core business, mainly focused on SAP. Uh, we are more than 750 people uh, working worldwide uh, in nearly all continents. Uh, in 2021, we had an overall revenue of 84 million. Uh, euros and uh, the big difference between us and some others on the market is that we are 100% employee owned so it means the company belongs to the employees. Um, we are a very long time on the market since 1969 well, that means more than 52 years on the market and uh, more than 25 years we are an SAP partner and today our main business is around SAP. Um, one thing we are very proud about is that we have a net zero uh, carbon uh, balance. Uh, in mid-2021, we got uh, neutral on that. Uh, that is, on the one hand, something we did with uh, reducing our uh, consumption of uh, carbon. But uh, how we did that is uh, part of our innovation and technology. We, we do that uh, means we measure our uh, CO2 balance all on SAP system. So what we consume, for example, with our offices uh, during travel, business travel, and all these things uh, that is measured and uh, analyzed by our S4 systems we use ourselves with a dashboard. Uh, and the analytics cloud, yeah, but that's not the focus today. So our industry focus are several industries you see here, like service industries, consumer, discrete, financial services, public services, and energy and natural service. That's our core business. And the services we offer is a full supply chain and covering all SAP uh, solutions from S4. HANA to yard logistics, uh, transportation management, extended warehouse management. And we have a lot of own assets and products around uh, that portfolio. Yeah, that should be enough for giving a short introduction on Westernacher. And uh, I would handle over to Alexander, uh, who will talk about his topic right now. So Alexander is yours. My name is Alexander Grieb. I'm the Vice President for Digital Transformation at Westernacher. My job today basically is give you a little bit of an introduction, basically how we see digital transformation, what are the challenges, what is important when going to S4 HANA, and um, a little bit about the best-in-class adopters, best practices, and how 
SAP and Western Sahara can help you with moving to SAP S4 HANA the right way. I do not want to spend too much time. Um, I want to start about one thing, which is for me a very important baseline. Um, it is, and that's what Michael Sokolek probably can approve that, what I say, what we found out in the last six years is that you can say digitalization is basically not an on-off switch. Um, it depends how you start, what your mindset is, how you approach that topic, um, and how many benefits you actually get out um, when you basically are finished with it. What exists there is what we call the trap value gap uh, between, on the one hand, what's theoretically possible, um, that's the, on this graph, the um, upper part um, on the technical evolution, when you basically would be able to fully leverage any benefits the new technology offers, but where a lot of customers and adopters come out um, when they are moving to S4HANA, which is more or less on the bottom level, uh, because they basically just do what they need to do. They do a lean migration. And by this, there is a quite a huge gap of basically what is possible and where you may come out. And this is quite relevant because um, you have basically now when you do the move, a one in a 10 years chance to set things right, to really connect your strategy and to the solution and vice versa. And why people who, what we found out, who in the end came out as a digital champion, they basically have certain things in common, which they, um, which are different to those, for example, who, um, just um, yeah, basically did a lean transformation. And we want to talk in the beginning about um, yeah, what basically these kind of common things are. So you can then check mark basically if you are doing the right focus and uh, doing uh, setting the focus right basically in your transformation. So um, one of the examples that is very popular in the point is the example and the analogy to describe how important it is and how um, relevant the right mindset is, the cell phone analogy. Um, because when we say uh, our legacy customers so who work with, for example, SAP ACC, ECC, um, they basically work technology-wise on the same level like this mobile phone uh, from 2005. This is the one I had. Um, it doesn't mean that it's a bad one. Um, I really enjoyed it basically because um, it was advanced. You could do a lot of things with it. The battery lasted for about a week. Um, try to do it today with your smartphone. And you could do something like yeah, a little bit pixelated photos with it. You could uh, listen to some music. So basically, I at that time, like in 2005, I could not really think of more. But what we want to do is uh, we want to come up with that and jump to that technology. And now we really should think about how we usually do this in our private lives. How are we approaching a technology like this when we move from here to there? Um, we do this where the capabilities. Yeah, we take, for example, this iPhone and think like, um, what does this iPhone offer me capability wise? Then we find out, for example, location based services. And we immediately connect these capabilities to our private use cases. Like, for example, location based services offer us with Komodo, Google Maps, the possibility not to get lost, for example, when we are with a mountain bike in the woods. Or other people say, great, Tinder is now possible, we can meet new people. Um, so, in our private lives, we always immediately go into the capabilities to connect with the new technologies. And this, by this, we guarantee that we leverage technology for us in the best possible way. Unfortunately, in our business life, we completely behave differently. We behave like that, that we think that the way we work on that technological level with that mobile phone is the ultimate way that we have basically to save. And we have to check how we can continue to work on this technology like we used to work in 2005 uh, with our old mobile phone. And we try to, yeah, transfer the way into the new technology. And by this, we more or less, we continue or we carry over the limits we had in the basic, in the legacy technology over to the technology where these limits basically do not exist anymore. And uh, we really have to set clear, why do we work like we work with legacy technology? Not because we want to work like this, but because the way we work with the legacy technology is the only way the technology allows us to do. And as such, when we try to think that we have to transfer our processes that we 
like defined 12, 15 years ago to implement a strategy. Today, probably nobody remembers. If we carry this over um, to the um, modern technology, um, we basically set the stage for coming out suboptimal. And that's basically what is really the baseline. Uh, we really have to grab the new technology based on capabilities. And with that, I want to start on the characteristics that set best in class at top is ahead of the competition. And the first one is definitely they have the right mindset at the approach. And here we are already a bit on the, let's say, side that we discussed already concerning with the mobile phones. Um, the best in class adopters, they do not look back, they look forward. They say when they start with a um, when they start with an initiative like S4HANA, they say, okay, let me think about what is my strategy and how and what kind of capabilities do I need to fulfill my strategies? What are the things that I have to, to be able to do? We ask also questions like, um, what kind of things did you learn in the last three years, for example, during the pandemic or during in the age of disrupted supply chains? What capabilities would you have needed? Uh, we ask questions like, what do your customers expect in the next five years from you? And as such, we really do not go from the, in the first step from the technology only, but we come from the strategy. And as such, we have a forward-looking discussion and not a backwards-looking discussion. Um, the other thing that definitely is part of the right mindset is that we have to be clear that digitalization and as such, the s uh, initiatives is like that, is a business topic. And as such, we have to talk with business C level about business. Uh, this is something which should not happen as a IT only approach, but you really need heavy involvement by uh, business for this. And of course, keep it simple, avoid self-made complications. Um, I experienced in my past a lot of customers who basically lost years in looking for subjective gaps between the old technology and the new technology because, because they thought that basically this is something like life-saving and life important and critically important to be aware um, really where are the differences and where are the gaps between the old and the new one. Um, we have lots of examples where, for example, customers who had to do something like a greenfield, so who did not really care about any gaps because they full-on went for a leverage to new technology, came out perfectly as well. So um, avoid self-made complications, look forward, trust in your own abilities and keep it simple. What also is very important is to choose the right way to digitally transform. Now, the reason I say this is because in the past I've had lots of customers who approach me basically by welcoming me with the words, uh, my name is XYZ, we are a Brownfield customer. And um, that's quite remarkable because it shows that very, very many adopters, they immediately go with a fixed mindset into the migration and say like, we want to do a brownfield because anything else would be too cost uh, uh, ineffective or let's say would be too risky. And probably they do this because they like 20 years ago, uh, remember back the greenfield they did for their ECC or R3 implementation and they remember this was um, Big effort and this was expensive and took long and as such they yeah basically have a fixed mindset and this is a very high risk because it's much more behind the decision of the transition scenario than just like saying brownfield or greenfield and for example the selective data transition we will learn more about today it really sets the tone for your whole initiative um, you see this for example in that slide when you are fixed on a brownfield and you say, I want to do definitely a migration, um, you definitely have set the tone for your whole, whole initiative, for the whole discussion. You will always talk technical. So you will probably rest this in your IT department. The spends you are talking about are costs. So you're talking about a cost case and you're mainly talking about efficiency. You're talking about efficiency gains, TCO, technical improvement of IT implementation efficiency. So um, a very, 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 IT-centered approach. But when you take a look at this graph and the more to the right you move, the more you will realize that the more you think about um, in, encompassing or embracing the new capabilities that the technology offers you, the more you will find out that your conversation suddenly becomes more strategic. You're talking more about business topics. You're talking about what kind of uh, business value 
and not only IT value this um, solution will give you. So you will start to talk more about effectiveness. It's not about any more about continuing the same things you did all the time, just a bit better, but it's now about being able to do things you were not able to do before. And so this it's really essential that you do the right decision concerning your um, transformation model. And um, what I always call the best practice approach to find the right transition model, because um, all our um, experience is in it, is to do a, let's say, an analysis before you start. And this analysis should be like you set at first um, a process map where you divide between your commodity processes and your differentiating processes. Why should you divide like this? Because the commodity processes are the processes where basically everybody works the same. Yeah, or where everybody from each um, and every industry can align on a certain standard. Yeah, for example, the processes in the area of finance, of, of travel management, of uh, HR. Um, company like Siemens, for example, works exactly the same or wants to work exactly the same way um, like um, a mid-size uh, IMC manufacturer, for example. And um, those commodity processes, you basically do not want to spend time with that. You want to consume those best practices, ideally as service um, from the cloud. But more important are the differentiating processes. The differentiating processes who are something like, from our experience, between 5 and 20% of your processes, so they're very um, definitely smaller part. Those are the processes where um, the customer decides in the end if he buys from you or if he buys from your competition. So that's where you really want to fully leverage the benefits of, um, of digitalization. So what do you do in that area? Um, you approach those different shading processes from two sides, definitely from the company strategy, the questions that we asked um, about two minutes ago, like really about what kind of capabilities do I need in these processes to fulfill my strategy? But you also come from the other side, which is the innovation possibilities driven by, for example, SAP S4HANA, where you say, what kind of capabilities offers me the new technology that I may have not standing in my, um, in my strategy, but would help me otherwise. And when you do this, you come out with a list. Um, you can call it innovation list by topics you want to fulfill in your um, implementation. And then you take the points of this innovation list and put it on a, um, on a time scale, like we have here uh, on the bottom, and you write it those who are short-term goals into the short-term time frame, which is basically the project runtime until the go live, um, the midterm time frame, which is basically the time from uh, go live until end of year one and the long-term time frame, which is basically starting year two. And you then see basically what of kind of customer you are. Because when you have, for example, lots of uh, topics um, below the short time frame um, area, there are probably a lot of things that you really have to do. And obviously you have, and that you need already doing at the time of your go live. So probably um, your as is legacy system is not really fitting anymore then you probably are not really a migration customer. You really should, should think about at least making a smart uh, selective transition and going where the benefits are for you. But for example, if you have the most thing in your long-term time frame uh, standing, then ob obviously you're up to date with your system and you're probably um, good consulted by doing a migration first and then going into an optimization. Phase. So if you do something like this, you know basically um, where you are what you are and what's the best way to do and if you look for example at the commodity process and differentiating processes uh, diversification this is also important for a, for a second reason and the second reason is because you want then to optimize these processes in a different way and this is important because we see quite often that um, adopters they try of course to optimize they try to use modern technologies like um, ai like robotic process automatization but they apply completely wrong. And this really helps you to find the right way to optimize your processes. Like for example, in the commodity processes, what, where we found out and said like, yeah, we want to lower the bottom line. We want to push it down. That's where you want to really go into efficiency. You want to use automation for cost optimization. So that is where you want to standardize, where you yeah, want to use, for example, robotic process automatization, where you do not 
way do you not want for example robotic process automatization is in a different shading processes because there you want to optimize in a different way you want to rise the top line that's where you really should put in like smart technologies who help you to reimagine your business processes and models so it's really 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 important that you use a lot of unartificial intelligence in the beginning in the analysis and in setting the stage of your digitalization initiative and that's what we for example do with our approach of for digital transformation where we say within six steps you really cover the whole topic of best practices from the beginning from the start looking where you are until the best in class implementation where we say you should start at first of course that's what we do with you uh, together about um, education the customer in context of the sap strategy what are the best practices what are the stepping stones and the stumbling stones which you should avoid what are the best practices and and the really good things so that we are all in the same right mindset and then we build the process map and separate the commodity process and differentiating processes we then identify the biggest strategic goals together with you yeah we do exactly that what we have stated in the best practice mindset we connect your strategy to the solution derive the needed capabilities and as such then we are able to yeah show you an architecture and a roadmap that offers you with sap applications the capabilities to fully leverage the benefits what we also of course do is we have take a very very close look at your industry specifics and you have here an example from the chemical industry where we say um we to for especially in the um, the capability in the differentiating processes we go top down in that way that we talk with you like what are your ecosystem realities and the strategic priorities that you have in those areas because that are those areas you really cannot influence you just can react to but what you can do of course to use the right digitization strategies to have answers to that and by this we then are able to formulate the right digitization opportunities and capabilities for you to fully um, optimize um, your initiative so one example for those capabilities um, that really make a difference are insight to action and what is insight to action inside to actions basically um, the capability or the ability that inside you basically know really what your situation is what you are which is one of the first difficult things today um, but insights without action do not really help you because it's like when i give you bad news you say thank you very much for giving the bad news but what shall i do now and um one of the big differentiators for intelligent technology and best-in-class implementations is that the system then takes you from the step from from the um, point where you have this insights and then takes you to, uh, by the hand and guides you automated and uh, optimized to a solution for it and you can see this for example by um, using the new mrp live cockpit um, which is what we see here in an uh, example not the black box process that you probably know from ECC yeah where you run your MRP in the night and you get your exception list the next morning where probably like your um, um, your um, MRP did not really work out and then you have to find manually a solution for those um, but the system is now smarter it still of course has the exception list but for every point in the exception it shows you something like that which is um, the situation but also the solutions or the possible solutions the into action part because they what that's what you see in the end is uh, down there is um, like examples or options um, how to solve the issues they have rated it and for like preferable and non-preferable solutions by clicking on choose uh, the system puts in real time the solution into action so help us like these are everywhere within s4hana and it's of course on you and on us if you choose to work with us to together find this one uh, so in the end that you are able to do things you were not able to do before so let us take for three more minutes a look into what sap does for example to help you on this digital transformation journey and um, you probably will be hard pressed to have not heard in the last two years of rise with sap which is um, sap's flagship offering at the moment and what rise with sap is is um it's basically a package a bundle of providing you basically all the necessary solution 
that you need. So you can together then with your implementation partner, take this package, set it into action, and then you basically have all that you need. So what you have as an ingredient is, of course, SAP S4 HANA in the cloud, in a public or private version, um, on an infrastructure provider of your choice. So you can choose in that aspect between SAP, between Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, um, and Amazon Web Services. You get access to the business process intelligence portfolio where Johannes will give you a showcase on later on. And um, of course, um, helpers like custom code analyzer, readiness check, which help you and guide you uh, doing the implementation. But what is very, very important for me is the SAP business technology platform, which offers you even in the cloud, the possibility to individualize, to set your differentiation right with uh, custom code and C transactions that you do not, of course, or what you should not um, implement in the clouds in your, on the core system, but on the sidecar PAS as uh, the business technology platform is. Um, SAP also adds additional optional packages, for example, when you are part of a certain industry. Um, so the former industry packages that you are uh, or that you use to as an as add-ons within the ECC are now part of the industry cloud. Um, also, of course, line of business packages optional who are enhancing your functionality um, in the area of planning, in the area of HR, um, basically the commodity process we are talking about. So one last point of, from my side, also what's very important, um, the commercial construct, because it definitely simplifies if you do not need five different commercial constructs anymore um, to implement with different parties. Uh, basically everything that you used to have concerning infrastructure management, software support and technical management services, you get now with via one co contract with SAP. And um, basically, only other thing is is advisory implementation services and application management services, which, for example, an SAP partner like Westermacher also offers you both. So basically, with with the help of Rise with SAP, you come out now with two contracts instead of five contracts that you had in the past. Last word from my side: um, Is this enough? Is rise really helping you is it definitely um, recommendable we do we recommend you to use rise with sap as um, the commercialization package to do the choice what of course where rise cannot help you is it also makes digitalization not an off-on switch you still have to imply the best practices the right mindset that what we were talking about in the last 25 minutes um, but that's our job as Westernacher is your partner, so talk to us. Um, Rise powered by Westernacher Consulting is probably the perfect combination to leverage the benefits of enterprise digitalization for you. So, so much for me. My name is Alexander Greb. I will remain here for the Q&A session, so I'm looking forward to receive your questions. And um, I'm giving over now to the next step. I think it's Michael Sokolek. Yes, that's we are answering Mr. What now and Michael is in charge of that presentation. Okay. I show my screen. Can you see the slides? Perfect. Good, yeah. So um yeah, welcome from my side. My name is Michael. I'm part of the SAP um yeah company, let me say it this way, more specifically of the SAP Signavio with SAP since 25 years. And one and a half years ago, I decided to move away from my previous role, which was being uh, an advisor and architect in the Esfahana area, um, doing things that um, Alexander described, educating customers about Esfahana, helping them to find the value in the transition, understanding also the transition path, but one and a half years ago, I decided to make a, a next uh, move within SAP. Obviously, 25 years, you need to do a couple of moves, otherwise you're getting a little bit uh, tired. And I moved into a new space, which at that point of time was called Business Pros Intelligence. And why did that new line of business area at SAP was created? Because we identified what Alexander was showing at the very beginning of his presentation, that there's a tremendous gap between what customers could achieve if they transition to S4HANA and what they really do. Because it's like 
what everybody says, like, I'm excited about new stuff, when it comes to doing the new stuff, making the change, cutting down, for example, custom code, bespoke processes that have been right 25 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago when they were implemented. It is a completely different um, matter when it's reality. But we decided, when I say we, as our board, as Christian Klein, that we need to double down on what we call business process intelligence, understanding business processes, continuously transforming business processes. And for that very reason, we announced one and a half years ago also the acquisition of SAP Signavio, because we said we could develop everything on our own, but there's a very good partner of ours, Subsignavio, a lot of customers already working with Subsignavio, and we said we want to invest into this. So that's why we created a new unit um, with a new product, and I want to talk about that, and I will also explain what is already part of the rights offering that Alexander was just showing you that. Now, basically, the, the, what, what Alexander showed with the mobile analogy is that every customer who makes the move to S4HANA has a dramatic uh, dramatically opportunity to improve basically the way he runs business processes and to shape the future of the company. So that's an opportunity. So it's not a transition from a technology ECC to S4HANA in the cloud image flavor, but it's also the opportunity to rethink exactly as Alexander also said, what are processes that differentiate myself? What are processes that in the future might be even more critical for the future success of my company? In other processes, for example, in finance, that are not differentiating, that I really should standardize. And all in this sort of like wild world in which we're living, where companies are battling for resources and rest of continuous change. So that's the opportunity which is on hand. And in order to, to do that, let us look at what, what customers tell us, and probably Alexander and the rest of our team can confirm that. Um, well, if you do such a transformation, and that's not so different, right? Then um, there's a, a, a lot of like, let me say, lack that we see um, in decision making. Yes, this, I could change this, I could do that, but am I confident that I'm making the right decision? Do I have the data points that tell me where should I now invest time to rechange processes or where should I simply keep them? We also know that uh, transformation is not like a, an IT thing. It's an enterprise transformation, yeah? In the old days, we were saying it's not an IT project, it's a business process. For me, it's an enterprise pro pro project. And long term, everybody in the organization should be involved in such an Esfahana or RISE transformation. And the organizational buy-in so that people are committed to change is essential. You can only do it with the people. You can only do it with the employees. You can only do it with the whole team. It's nothing you... Um, basically do in isolation as a technical lift and shift in the SAP basis department. We also there, see there's a, a great lack of expertise. When I talk with customers, there were the years where the systems were built up, where they were a competence center, where they were great knowledge about processes, now processes are performing, and what are the capabilities even in the ECC system. But this expertise over time, because of like fluctuation, people changing jobs, of roll out to different uh, regions of, uh, for example, of a company slowly faded away. And uh, as we said all along, the people focus is essential, and we see that it's more technology driven. Hey, there's a new database, there's HANA, there's S4. Let us try to do something technically. But the focus should be on the people and the processes and how well they're performing with these processes. And those are challenges that we see when people do the transformation and why they, at the end of the day, might also be reluctant to start the transformation at all. To turn it around, what we believe, what are the principles? And I just said it, that every s 4 transformation is by nature a business transformation, or even an enterprise transformation, because you transform the way you run your enterprise for the better to stay competitive. And if you think about it as a business transformation, then it's logic that it does not just contain systems, but it contains and it connects the people, the system, with processes. The processes, I'm saying, are the grassroots of every company. The better you can run your processes, the more efficient you can run your processes, the, the more likely it is that you're successful and that you, for example, can you know, get, get a better margin on your products. So because it's not a technology transformation, it's a business transformation, it needs to be seen through the processes. Again, exactly as uh, Alexander said, sorry. 
you need to think about what are the processes I don't care about when I transform because they are running well and I'm not differentiating, or what are the ones that cost me a lot of time because I modified them and I don't need that because they're better capabilities, and what are the ones that are differentiating, where I really need to understand how I basically use S4HANA to its best with new competitive uh, um, capabilities like the MAP run Alex was showing. And the other important thing is, whatever you're going to do in this transformation, it's an investment in the future, and it's a path to a continuous pros excellence, as it says there. This is not a one step. This is not like, okay, now I need to do an s 4 transformation. Oh, now I need to basically look into my processes and see how they're running. And then I decide what I'm going to take out of s 4 And once I've done it, then I'm done. No. A lot of the customers I'm seeing is they have no governance of the processes. They have no ownership. And it's, a, it's not like a one-time exercise. During the transformation, you need, to, next to many other things, basically see it in your organization that you go into a mindset of a continuous understanding of your processes and continuously optimizing your processes with new capabilities. Can you do this immediately from zero to 100? No. It's not like you say you run a marathon in two weeks' time and the marathon you're going to run in three hours. This takes years, but there's a starting point. There's a will, there's a goal that you want to run a marathon or whatever you're going to do as sports. And that's super important that you use this step of going into the aspire transformation also as momentum to build up an organization that is not broken down between business and IT in different silos and then silos along the different business processes, that, but you break this um, sort of like um, uh, silos or that you have a few of like modules, I'm responsible for this module, I'm responsible for module, this module, but you think your process, your, your company through the lens of a process and yet you go into what we call a continuous process excellence. Because then you basically get a continuous value increase out of the investment you're going to take in the S4 transformation. The overall goal, if you look at uh, SAP's webpage, or if you've seen SAP corporate pr presentations, is that we want that every company becomes an intellig intelligent, sustainable enterprise. And the top layer of this intelligent, sustainable enterprise next to other layers like the business technology uh, uh, platform that the BDP that um, Alex just mentioned is business process management with industry specific end-to-end -end processes where s 4 harm is the core but not the only player but in order to come to these intelligent business processes as I said at the beginning we said we need to have a tool a platform where we basically also publish our content that helps you our customers to make this transformation. And this is the SAP Signavia Process Transformation Suite. Now, the SAP, sorry, SAP Signavia Process Transformation Suite, if you look at this visualization, is a modular cloud application that covers various aspects. And depending on which transformation path you, you are on, whether it's a public cloud, a private cloud, a new implementation, a conversion, a hybrid one, you might start with different capabilities. Uh, along the different color codings here. If you, for example, take a customer who's running 10 years, 15, 20 years, EZC, typically do not have insights about how the process are running. So we have a process insights application with, and I can really say it because I'm doing this with customer on my daily job now, within 24 hours you get transparency about your end-to-end -end processes. And you know how well you are, for example, monthly closing are running or how good you are your MRP is, is running and you see the lead times, you see the automation rate, you see the backlogs. Now, when you want to go deeper, we obviously also have a mining component. Mining is something great because you can get, go very deep when you mine, but you only want to mine where it makes sense. So we have a combination of process insights where we have black and play, show you how your processes run, and then you can for specific use cases and purposes where you say you want to go deeper to the mining. But we also believe that customers, because they need to continuously transform themselves, they have merged the acquisition scenario, for example, they need to have a foundation where the processes are continuously accessible to everybody. It's not like a process management you do and you put in the shelf, right? You say, okay, I've done my process management for some legal or compliance situation. No, it's a process management which connects all the different players of a process, but also in business and IT. So we have this SAP Signavia Process Manager for where, for example, also can uh, leverage the um, SAP best practices 
if you do a new implementation as a starting point and have a fit to standard approach in here with a subactivity with Goichi. Over and above the processes, we have journeys so that you can um, take the individual processes and model journeys from a customer who's buying a product to the service and that you uh, define journeys, uh, journeys with a process governance component, which ensures, for example, that if you want to make process changes, you inform the right stakeholders or even ask them for approval. And it's an integration to our SAP PTP with an SAP automation component in here. So if there are processes you want to automate, we're going to link into our business technology platform. And in the middle part, we have the SAP Scenario Process Collaboration Hub, where our vision of how things work is that everybody in your organization has access to the processes via the Collaboration Hub, where they, for example, share comments, ask questions about processes. That's exactly also how we, by the way, use SAP Signal, we add SAP ourselves. Now, the, 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 the vision that we basically foresee is that we dramatically lower the time to insight how uh, customers, how you understand how you run your processes. Because we believe that this continuous process transformation, not like a one-off a start an initiative, is a source for competitive advantage. If you understand how your processes are running, if you understand that in a particular company called or plan or sales product, things are working better than in others, you can basically re-educate people. You can understand what's going wrong and you need to do this. It's like with the you know, clock here when I do my running or it's like if you drive a car, you have telemetrics, right? You know how you perform. And that's the same thing that you want to have for your core of your IT, of your organization, you're the main, most important IT system, your EP system, you want to understand how the process are running. You not only want to understand whether the uptime is great, whether the response time is good, right? You want to understand how your processes are running and you want to do this fast and efficient and permanent. And what you also want is, you want to be fast when it comes to adoption. So you don't want to have like long running projects you want to get recommendations about what to do, what to leverage based on existing and new capabilities. So our vision is one where processes connect business and IT, where process is nothing that you just again set, put in the shelf and say, hey, here's my process documentation, but where processes basically are continuously understood, obviously, as I said, prioritized to maybe a few at the beginning and then you grow over time, and then you can continuously come in a mode of adapting the processes. And the first big adoption step, if you think about it like that, is the move to SAP as Fahana. So that's our suite. I already said on, on, the, on, on the other slide, on the, on the talk track, those are the different components. And when I look at the customers who are basically using um, 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 these, these, um, these products, again, depending on where they are, on which journey they are, they use different of those components. And I'm not saying that it's like you just use everything at one go. You use what you want to use from this tool set in order to basically best support your transition journey. Um, and as I said, it's not only just to, to open this up, a platform that is uh, for the right SAP as Vahana transformation projects required, but for a lot of like other um, 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 initiatives yeah, that you basically can divide between enterprise wide transformation and process excellence. So customers who talk to us, maybe even prior, to moving to s hana say, I will have a process focus on purchase to pay. I'm planning uh, to go in s hana maybe in, in, in one or two years' time because this is a big project. I need to finish other running projects. And then they're going to start to use the platform in what we call process excellence, something that is not related directly to an s hana transition, but it could be done before. You can done afterwards. So, to put a little bit more flesh on the bones, and I, and, and I really will go through this very quickly, so it's like a, a little video almost. Um, the, you do this when you do a transition with a certain like methodology, with certain steps. SAP proposes a methodology which is called SAP Activate. You might have heard about other methodologies, but at the end of the day, they all just differ by name and they differ a little bit by the steps. And uh, the steps are discovered, so you understand your processes, you prepare the transition, you explore the content, you realize, you go into the application lifecycle, deploy, and then you run. And then all of these steps, yeah, SAP Signavio, and you can see the different activity at a very high level, plays an important role. 
And as I said, you want to understand, for example, your processes and run a process analysis. You want to prepare in the prepare step, yeah, I understand you could as is processes in order to make a target status definition saying like, what are the best practices are going to use for these differentiating processes uh, that Alex mentioned. Then in the realization phase, when you do the implementation, you might use SAP Solution Manager for that. You want to hand that over in order, for example, then to do the, um, uh, the configuration of the system. If you do the deployment of the solution to different entities, you want, as I said, that your employees can go to a repository of the processes, have their um, uh, enablement material linked to the processes, understand what is important for them, and have access and transparency on the change that is happening. And like the beginning starts with understanding how your processes work. At the end, you also want to monitor, obviously, how well your changed processes are, are running in order to understand whether the, the change is successful. So that, for example, if you set yourself the goal to reduce the day sales outstanding by so many days because of shortening a particular step in an end-to-end -end process, you want to monitor that. So that's why we've enhanced Subactivate with SAP Signavio in order to make it not like a technical lift and shift move, but really to ensure that you rethink your business processes as part of your transition. And when we go through this, uh, as I said, very, very quickly and just understand how this uh, suite that I was showing on the previous slide helps you, then let us look at the individual steps. So there's a step when we go into to discover where we can provide not only insights about where your processes are running, but also about capabilities in S4HANA that based on the current usage and inefficiencies in the processes make most sense to be used. Here you can see, for example, out of the box, it is SAP Process Insights, an end-to-end -end process lead to cash from the creation of a sales order to the customer um, uh, invoice item created. This is the demo system, so the, the numbers are not that fantastic. In reality, you have a couple of, of hundred thousands in here, but you can easily understand where you have inefficiencies, for example, that one need to look at, and also understand here in the innovation recommendations what new innovations, such as shown in the previous screenshot, could be leveraged. You can also look at individual performance indicators so that you, for example, can see um, the automation rate, the backlog uh, rate. Here, obviously, very good, 100%. In other cases, that's not so good. So you know where you need to look at. So because uh, if you don't have the transparency about your processes, you might not know where to start. So this is a tool, this is an application that helps you at the very beginning, even prior as a pre-project, I think also as Alex said, to understand where do we actually stand. A lot of customers also use this to understand are their processes sort of okay and maybe even the conversion would do the trick or are they so sort of like inefficient that there's so much work to be done that this is not a step-by-step -step, um, um, occasion but it really require a, a more let me say traumatic change in the sense of like setting up a new system. Uh, we have correction recommendations where we give recommendations very specific of what reconfiguration needs to be done. This is expert knowledge that usually takes a lot of time to, to figure out. And that's the first step. The next step, as I said, we have a mining component in there. So when you want to go deeper, you can look at your current processes by doing um, uh, not only um, uh, the, the insights without a box, but you can uh, look at your SS processes, how they run today. You can see on the right-hand side, a lot of like widgets that you can set up to answer very specific questions about how you run your processes. That's something you typically do if you know there's a process, for example, where you have rolled it out over many years and there's a lot of like process variants. Now you want to understand what are the best performing variants and also reduce the number of variants to reduce over complexity in your IT system. You can look at this happy path, yeah, as you probably most of you have heard, understanding what are the cases are most frequently performed. And you can also do a conformance check if you have already a process model whether your process model that you maybe have done some years ago, which might still be valid, is actually mapping the reality. Other way around, if you say, I don't have a process model, but I have processes, you could, out of those mind processes, create a new repository of processes by generating so-called BPN diagrams. This collaboration on the future processes, as I said, could also be that when I go to S4HANA, there's a new credit management included. 
And I want to embrace this credit management. So I'm basically importing the best practice of credit management. And I'm going to work that out in a workshop with my business stakeholders and understand how it's going to be implemented. On the next slide, you can see if you have an existing process and you implement the best practice process, you can see with the BLAST what are the additional steps that we propose in SAP in the best practice process and basically adjust an existing process to understand what is the difference. Govern of the rollout. So if you've decided to make changes to your processes and you have already um, a governance set up so that you have responsible people for the processes, you basically can send those process changes to for improvement. That's something that you might not use at the beginning because, as I said, my experience is a lot of customers do not have that organization. But if you think about a continuous process change, you want to ensure that you've already invested into this leveraged platform to have such kind of like, you know, there's a little step I'm going to change and I request for an approval and I'm going to do this in a structured manner and not just sending out emails or managing or bags. And then we have uh, the um, uh, uh, monitoring at the end, as I said, they here, for example, as I said, um, um, look at the process conformance. So assume that you have said those are the key new processes that I use of S4HANA. I redefine completely, for example, a manufacturing uh, a process. And now I'm going to compare this process with the as is process based on mining. And I can see basically the variation. And I know to whom do I talk in uh, which particular process step or in which particular organization. Unit. So that's our our end-to-end -end view on on what we um, believe we, it, it's required. And again, as I said, depending on who you are, where do you start, you will use uh, different capabilities. Now, what we have as part of the rise offering, and I just opened the whole slide in here, uh, we've already included three of those components with some limitations. So um, Alex was showing the slide. You might remember that there is sort of like called startup packs included, and there's a startup. Pack. So if you might have already signed RISE, made a contract, you are eligible to run process insights with one-time data load. So you can connect your ERP system, do a one-time data load with a certain limit and volume, which is usually not an, not an issue, and get you know, full transparency with like hundreds of processes and KPIs on how your processes are run. You can use the process manager and the collaboration hub with respective three or 10 users, and that's obviously over the lifetime of your contract. So you have something included for basically everybody to get started and to basically do the first step into like, a, yeah, I would call it a process to an organization with no size between business and IT. If you have not yet signed rights, there's an easy way to get started into this, this conversation because everything has to start and then involve, which is called process discovery for S5 transformation. You can request free of charge your process discovery. That is a, let me say, a very, very limited version of what Process Insights does with around 80 KPIs. But it helps you to understand how your processes, your key essential processes are running. And based on that, if you would sign RISE, you can extend on Process Insights. And then based on that, continue the journey to, let me say, the more not the complex things, but more fully thinking through things like process management, for example. So depending on where you are, you either can directly use what's included in the startup pack or do the first step with um, process discovery. So what we would recommend is if you do this transition, if you start this transition, get executive buy-in. Because only if you do it top down and when you address the right sort of like uh, improvement potentials, you will see the value of the transition and finally get it going. Start improving right away. If you use process discovery or if you use process insights in a pre phase, there's a lot of things typically that you even can do, obviously, if you're not completely doing new implementation in your ECC system, where we say do it step by step. Yeah, there's not another time the monster project that you're going to do two or three years, but typically we see a lot of potential even in the existing ECC systems. And if they might be 10 or 15 years old, it doesn't matter, where people uh, can, can uh, get, get improvements. Um, if you use our platform, if you use best practices, for example, in there, you can de-risk your project. You can, for example, freeze the scope by saying these are the processes that we implement them, and you have this repository also within your project to keep the hand on it. Um, you can secure the adoption of change. 
because, as I said, bringing all the stakeholders to, uh, together, decision makers, the business and the IT, and that you could have this continuous change only happens if you have a tool, and we believe SAP um, Signario Process Transformation uh, is, uh, suite is the tool, and that leads you to what I said at the beginning, to a continuous process excellence, where you basically have fact-based KPIs that help you to tell you where you should draw your attention and where the improvement should happen. That's all I wanted to say. Um, thanks for your attention. As um, Alex, I will be staying the call and I'm looking forward to any questions later on. Thanks a lot. So, Michael, thanks a lot. And uh, let's hand it over to Johannes and who is doing a demo on that. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, everyone. Welcome also from my side. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're very genuine with your time spending two hours with us, Westenacher, SAP and SNP. So I'm really honored now to showcase you and demo everything or at least something that Alex and Michael already told you. So I strongly hope that you might say, aha, uh -huh, yeah, that's what Alex said. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what Michael said. Because now we are actually getting started. We're getting started with business process intelligence. Why? Because this tool, first of all, comes free of charge if you are an existing SAP customer and maintenance. And second, it helps you really understand the value of S4HANA system. If you're thinking about the slide from Alex, where he showed the phone analogy from his old 2005 Sony Ericsson and now the iPhone, you really see a gap between the technology and the advancement it made. Same is what we are just seeing now over the next upcoming 15 minutes. I'm showcasing you SAP Process Discovery. This tool helps you to receive firsthand and industry-specific insights regarding your process performance, combined with improvement recommendations and automation potentials. So no fancy slides, just a live demo. I will just share my screen and log into it right away. And we're doing it for the consumer product industry. So as I told you, process discovery comes industry specifically. So I hope that you are seeing my screen. I just shared it. That's actually SAP process discovery. As you see, it's nicely intuitively designed. You have an overview. It comes with seven end-to-end -end business processes you might find yourself within order to cash, procure to pay, record to report. It also comes with six lines of business, finance, manufacturing, sales, and so on. And it has its own rhythm to emphasize on process automation as well as technical ERP system usage capabilities. Let's assume you are a line of business manager for finance. You might be interested about your own line of business. So let's check out finance. You already have an overview here regarding opportunities to improve about KPIs, where you are performing well. And actually, you can select some value drivers. For instance, you want to reduce days sales outstanding. You click on it, and then you have the first KPIs that are referring to this value driver. So if you have a click on it, we see, OK, here's something going on. We have an age distribution. And if we have a closer look, OK, um, here in purple, it's the market unit Oceana and the market unit US Southwest. They're having the, the highest number regarding delivery items shipped and not built. And then you have a closer look regarding age distribution. OK, some parts are less than three months and some others, they are older than five years. So you might drill down and yeah, dig deeper to really understand the possible causes and the potential business impact it might have. Furthermore, it takes you straight to the SAP KPI catalog where you can further benchmark your industry to this KPI. If I scroll down, actually here we have processes with automation potential. And here I can activate this rhythm we say, okay, benchmark comparison, meaning how are we performing compared to industry peers? 
And if we have this, for instance, example for accounts receivables, because I'm finance, I want to, you know, have a closer look regarding order to cash related elements, I would choose accounts receivables, I click on it, and then we see, okay, there's high manual effort for managed customer line items. So actually for the transaction FBL 5N, whereas the industry standard is roughly 30%. So we are tremendously above. Even now for dis displaying customer balances, where the industry standard is yeah, 0.7% for the transaction FD 10N, we are more than 12%. What's going on? So actually then we can really um, dive deeper and really understand what's going on, actually why are we so manually um, operating and how can we improve it to make it more automated. It comes with also a standard process diagram. Here for instance we have the main uh, standard flow for the best practice um, J59 process for accounts receivables but if we scroll down we also have the single elements for instance for preparation of payments and so on so you can really orientate yourself here on the standard pro um, process flow and might manually um, already uh, identify some gaps between your current as is and your to be if i scroll further down here we have now the improvement recommendations so we have recommendations related to S4HANA, machine learning, intelligent robotic process automation, Fiori Lighthouse, situation handling, and so on. But as today's workshop is all about S4HANA capabilities, I would now choose again, okay, accounts receivables, because we have a high use, usage base relevance, and it's highly industry popular. I click on it, and it takes me straight to the SAP industry solution portfolio where I can now really understand what's in, in this scope item and what are the major value drivers. You really understand about the need and the importance to increase the capability of this scope item. It takes you to potential improvement regarding use experience, for instance, Fiori. It comes with several best practices, how you can really orientate yourself. And if you remember the slide of Alex, where he showed, okay, at normal technical conversion, you know, you pretty much stagnate. And then there's this leverage gap. Using these recommendations and these improvement potentials here, you can really leverage the full potential and bring the full horsepower of your S4 HANA system to the street. Let's say you're a process owner and you want to really optimize all the steps that are going on in your end-to-end -end process. Let's say you are the process owner of order to cash. We already see here we have the different steps within the sub-process steps with the involved line of business. Okay, finance and sales is always involved in order to cash process. If I scroll down here, and for instance, we have a look on invoice creation. We see here for sales invoices not posted to accounting, there's actually a poor performance. I can click on it and we see, okay, um, headquarter, okay, high number, sales error for Italy, pretty much a high number. So Italy is struggling with sales orders not posted to accounting. And again, we have age distribution and you realize, okay, wow, there's a huge number more than five years from now. Um, you could now approach Italy or approach your um, system admins and really you know, understand the root cause. Why is it like this? Why is it five to 10 years? Why is it Italy? Long story short, it really gives you an overview about possible causes and of course the potential business impact it has. And furthermore, as you see here on the right, you see also how you are performing compared to, to your industry peers. Again, with reference to the KPA, KPI catalog. All this is actually the baseline if you want to get started with business process intelligence as Michael just showed case you. Because here you can really identify potential. Hmm, do we need to dive really deep? Do we need to you know, really apply process insights 
Do we need to apply process mining? Do we need to consider the outside in perspective? Maybe we need to um, consider customer experience to reach not only operational excellence, but also customer excellence and many more workflow um, execution and automation execution are also topic. So if I click here on process automation, we have a nice chart, really nicely intuitively designed. And here we see, okay, the areas with the most manual effort and the highest um, user base with the highest uh, potential for automation. And here we see accounting and financial close. If I scroll down, again, I can activate the benchmark comparison. And here I have the first one, as we saw it here in the graph, it's accounting and financial close. And here I click on it. And again, I see, for instance, for the FHLP03 transaction to display um, the transaction for financial statement download and printing. This is just an example, but we are four, almost five times above industry standard. Now we have the insights and thanks to SAP S4HANA capabilities, we can automate this one using Fiori capabilities and so on. How cool is this? And if I am or you are a technical expert in your company and you really want to understand the technical usage of your system, how much is standard code, how much is custom code, you can have this rhythm here and really understand, for instance, okay, here for financial accounting, a lot of, you know, uh, transactions are standard. Some of them are customized. If I scroll down further, I have again an intuitive chart, but actually I'm right now interested in a, in a simple list where I see, okay, here I have um, several custom codes. Actually, we can um, filter regarding basis components, controlling, you know, the modules that you are familiar with, financial accounting, logistics, and I can filter the transaction types. If I filter now on custom code, I have now an overview regarding various uh, custom codes I'm using at the moment. And then you see the manual effort, and then you see how many users are using this custom transaction. And then you can ask yourself, hmm, is this custom code still, this custom transaction still needed when we are moving to S4HANA? The answer might be yes, the, might, the answer might be no. So if it's no, then you can really standardize your processes and maybe relate to best practices. We saw at the beginning um, when Alex showed showcased the, 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 the different types of processes. So at the one hand you have commodity processes, on the other hand you have differentiating processes. If we focus on the commodity processes, maybe we can shift to standard. And the differentiating processes um, we, 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 we can now really um, optimize and really make them more efficient and also user-friendly with Fiori capabilities. So that's it from my side, actually, just a short wrap up. This process discovery comes free of charge. It really helps you to unleash the full potential of your S4HANA system. Um, it involves six line of businesses, so from finance, to manufacturing to supply chain, covering seven end-to-end -end processes for all your process owners from order to cash, book you to pay to record to port. And it really helps you to achieve this important buy-in of your business, as well as building your specific case towards S4HANA. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Johannes. So uh, now we had the why with Alexander, why we should do that, uh, the what about processes, and finally we are at the how. That means how do we do that, and uh, we will start with uh, some discussions about whether Greenfield, Brownfield, or something in between. And so we partner with SNP, so I'm really happy to have you in the call here, Richard. And finally, I uh, bring all together and say, okay, how can you start with us? We have evaluated and elaborated some startup packages. This will cover the next, let's say, 35 minutes, and then we have 10 minutes for discussion. So, Richard, it's up to you. Well, thanks very much uh, for having me. I don't know whether I can uh, 
match Johanna's level of energy, I think uh, I have to <laughs> take 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 a class with you, Johannes, on, on how to keep this up, really. <laughs> Um, a bit about SMP before we are really uh, deep into this, because uh, some of you may have never heard about uh, the company I rep uh, represent today. Um, we're a company um, that's heavily focused on uh, basically one line of business, which is basically the transformation of um, SAP data. And we've been doing so for more than uh, 20 years successfully, Across the globe, as you can see, um, we've got offices basically in well, uh, well, not 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 all continents yet, but uh, we we may get there. But um, um, in fairly um, exhaustive, uh, um, exhaustive um, footprint, we did more than four thousand, fourteen thousand five hundred projects in this space, and um, since we speak about S four today, um, that's just another, um, let's say. Uh, technology trigger um, that, that leads us to support customers in transforming their um, their SAP business landscapes, which we've been doing, as I said, for more than 20 years. Um, now, what do we typically see? And uh, maybe to go back to um, uh, the presentations you've seen before, we talked about a trap value gap. We, we talked about, well, re really using business um, business drivers for transformations. We talked about commodity processes versus differentiating processes. Now, if, um, if, if you are now not a business user who is uh, watching this webinar, but someone from IT, you may be thinking, right, but um, I've got um, basically maybe even a heavily outdated um, ECC system, maybe even older. There's still a lot of technical debt that I'm sitting on. And like with that, um, I now um, face actually a number of challenges that um, range from, well, uh, that relevant system data must be transferred to the new target system, um, the system architectures, different, uh, you, you're saying the characteristics of uh, templates may differ. You're looking at um, the stru structures of company codes, controlling areas, etc. cetera. Um, you're thinking about um, data volumes. Um, your ERP system might, might be several terabytes by now. So if, if, if you put this all together, you, you, you may be asking yourself, well, um, all nice and good. We want to change this, but this may take just forever. Um, this is something we hear from a number of um, a num number of our customers. We engage well. Uh, we were kindly invited today uh, by Vestenaha. We we heavily engage with and uh, through partners because we are a specialist and. Um, and this is something we see when when customers have decided to embark on to. Uh, their migration to S4, they say, well, yes, uh, we want to really harness what's well, what, what S4 has on offer. We want to jump onto this new technology, into this new world. We want to really change our processes. But, well, how do we overcome all, well, the technical depth, the challenges that may be residing in the systems we've got? Now, um, we, we touched on this early on. Um, there are these big paradigms between greenfield and brownfield, and you may be thinking, well, in one area things are pretty pretty solid. Um, you may want to keep them as is, but others really need to undergo substantial transformations, or you may even want to use this as an opportunity to leave to to to, to live well to really start afresh and start on a on a on a new uh, playing field which is greenfield and we see that that um, it's not an either or but sometimes in between uh, some some of the companies we speak with say well um, we want to basically start afresh but we still want to leverage some of the data we've acc accumulated over over the decades for um for analytics pur purposes, so sh how shall we go it about it? So, as you can see, quite easily, it 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 pretty much becomes obvious that it's not an e either or, but well, really picking what you want to 
take along in your rucksack to your know, new system and also bearing in mind that the new technology may come well in terms of um, um, in, in, in terms of infrastructure at a higher price tag, which, which offers you more, but well, then um, it's, it's kind of, you don't want to keep all the data in, in, in this expensive space. So um, we're really talking about a selective um, a data transition. And this is where um, we as SMP have um, basically, we, we, we've, we've, we've coined an approach we, we, which we call Bluefield, which pretty much addresses it and has some, uh, uh, and I'll come to that in, in a few slides, um, has a quite un unique approach, which we have basically put into our software, um, which is which is the Crystal Bridge, um, which is a piece of transformation uh, software that we uh, we partners and, um, and 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 customers basically use to keep transforming their SAP landscapes. Now, going back to what I said earlier, it's not only about S4. This this piece of software has been helping companies around the world to transform their SAP landscapes, and it's more important than ever right now to have a software-based standard approach to doing so. Now, um, what, what this piece of software basically includes are, um, well, is, is, is predefined content that you may leverage um, for your transformation projects. It's basically the IP that uh, we, we've gathered for, for decades now and and now share in the market with for, through our partners who help you really transform um, your companies over time and in a nutshell really and this is actually all that that, that it takes um, to really understand what it's all about it's about the decoupling um, the the transformation of your um, system itself and the data this is this this may be unfamiliar to to many of you but it's tried and tested it it's it's based on a well it's basically um, we we work on a table level here which enables us basically to just transform pieces of your data this is also just um, take, taking some of the data that you may not want and just basically leave it behind um, or transform all the data in one 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 go. But we do this, and this is um, this is I think one 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 of the key benefits of it. We 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 do this by just gradually migrating the data into an empty shell that we've created before, before doing a big go live. So you basically de-risk the whole process because even say if we'd realize at at some point um, that there are issues uh, before in go live we could still stop the process and and, and fall back on the uh, backup without really having big business disrupt, uh, disruptions and because we have selectively migrated uh, the, the the data over time the disruption to business is is minimal this is what um, i think this is this is personally i believe one of the uh, biggest values, uh, uh, biggest value, we've got the um, disruption to business. We've got lots of companies who say, well, look, a downtime in in uh, in my system for 48 hours would be uh, millions lost um, in, in the market. Look at retailers, look at um, so some, some other companies who heavily rely on their systems. So this is where we really provide um, safety, speed, and um, more, more importantly than, than um, anything, an approach which actually lets you choose what you want to take along and what not. Um, it's not something that's just a tool out there. We, we, we are, and this is something we are very proud of, uh, where we approved uh, or our methodology is approved and checked by two leading auditors, which means basically um, you, you can um, use it and afterwards you uh, don't have to and, and this is again um, money being saved on um, on audits afterwards because um, it, it it works and um, that the, the data that shows in the new system is basically um, 
is 100% compliant, so you don't actually have to have it rechecked by audit, which saves a lot of time and overhead um, in, in, in projects as well. Uh, we're sub-certified, we, we, we work very closely with SAP um, because, well, um, it's basically <laughs> The, 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 uh, it's SAP who make the market, uh, who create this great piece of software or the pieces of software. And we really uh, see ourselves as, uh, as as a company, as a partner that works closely with well, uh, SAP themselves and, 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 and other partners who like to really help you transform and harness the te technology um, quicker. Um, what does it also mean? And I think this this may be, um, if you think, oh yeah, all nice and good, um, but um, what does it really help you as well? Well, um, you can actually run several projects in parallel, and I think this is this is what really helps you to uh, try, uh, to, to to accelerate your time to market. And uh, well, we were talking about all these uh, processes and uh, technologies that you um, that that you may leverage to really. <laughs> to really change your company. And instead of looking for uh, years to, to, to see the results, uh, leveraging our software may help you basically get, get that time down to, to month rather than years. Um, as you can see, this is uh, the, seven, uh, the, the seven issues we, 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 we've seen before. Not all may apply to you, but it'll just show you that you can basically save a lot of time there on 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 uh, projects that business typically don't see as um as as innovative or as something that contributes to the top line um one company where where we did this uh, was was airbus and they basically uh, wanted to consolidate several um, erp systems to come up with a unified platform for for finance they did this with us um, so um, from from those projects you see it was a consolidation of systems it was implementing the new um, the new ledger and, and moving to s4 and um, since since they had time pressure because they really wanted to um, to, 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 to to show their um, their board as well um, what what they could make with this uh, technology they called us in and um, asked to basically uh, to, to, to deliver this project. And this wasn't done on, all on our own, but we really focused on this uh, data for, uh, transformation piece in a small time frame with uh, minimal downtime. Now, um, here's, um, a, here's a statement from Thomas Heine, uh, who's at Airbus Operations. Um, they, they were very happy with uh, what, what we uh, did because it really helped them to deliver the value in, in, a, in a quick time. And on the next slide, I'll just basically help you help you to understand why this was such such a successful project because, well, um, project time was reduced by uh, 50%. Now, if you just uh, make a calculation yourself, um, how much internal and potentially also external resources you may employ in such a project, um, you, you quickly realize that it, it, it not, not only does it help you to well show value to, to all relevant stakeholders within the business, but it, it, it also saves you to say, save a lot of money with, uh, within your business. So this is something where, and um, this, this, this is what, what will be touched on later, um, where, where if you have a proper look at the data migration piece of transformations where you not only be able to save a lot of costs, but also uh, generate a lot of um, a value. Give you an idea, we we work with pretty much, uh, well, with, with, a, with a vast range of companies across the world, big, big, big and small, um, but, um, and and across across industries and uh, we 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 are very proud of um, having a success rate of 100% there and this is why i think companies uh, like to choose us uh, time and again now with that i think i'm slightly ahead of time uh, which i hope uh, none of you will complain about uh, maybe more time for questions even afterwards thanks very much for having me
today and I'll hand over to Michael. Okay, thanks Richard. We've seen now a lot of things around why should you do a business transformation. Uh, you've seen tools like Signavio and methodologies uh, like RISE uh, with different accelerators uh, to get uh, to this transformation point. Um, so, um, we as Westernacher, we are a company which uh, gives us a frame for that. We're doing this business transformation at the core of our business, uh, that's our DNA. And so, uh, out of questions and discussions with a lot of customers, who said, okay, I know I have to go to S4HANA. Uh, the end of maintenance will be in 2027, uh, but uh, I'm working with my current ECC system since a lot of years. What is the best way for me to go to S4HANA? So we said, okay, um, we can help you. Uh, we don't want to do it the typical way that we send you some consultants doing a lot of workshops with you and coming out uh, with some results after three, six uh, months, whatever. Uh, we want to help you to start very fast and uh, create fast results. So what we did, we uh, created a so-called S4 HANA assessment startup packages. Uh, that's part of our Westernacher time to value solutions. Uh, in a nutshell, we combine what we've shown you here um, in these packages. So if you see, look at that slide, I know it's uh, very crowded, but uh, it's a key overview slide uh, which shows you what we do. Um, what we want to do in step zero is to understand where you are because um, there are a lot of ways to get to the S4 HANA transformation to find out what the right way for you. The first thing is we have to talk to you and to understand uh, where are you? Uh, what is your strategy? what could be uh, the right approach for you and uh, that is done in step zero. I get to this a slide later. Um, in step one, a week later, uh, uh, in the first week after we've started this program as uh, we are running these uh, tools we uh, discussed with you, so system scan uh, and the large package, uh, if you didn't uh, have done that so far. Uh, we can uh, run the SAP readiness check uh, or probably most of you have already done that. We have a look at that to see where you are from your system today from the technical point of view. And then uh, we run the business uh, process discovery. So that's what you've seen before. So uh, what uh, Johannes told you about the uh, business process discovery as part of the Signavio package. And um, so we uh, producing a lot of results in the first week and uh, then we go in a step two and that depends on the packages and I'm going to describe a little bit later what these uh, packages do. Uh, we analyze these um, results of these tools. Uh, we run workshop and interviews with you to, to get more insights and then depending on the package uh, we are looking at different processes in different lines of businesses and analyze uh, different value drivers. And uh, out of that, in step three, uh, we are coming back with our results, all discussed with you, out of the findings we got out of the tools and do a presentation. So that's more or less what we do in these packages. So um, if you go a slide ahead if we start with step zero. Yes, uh, that was you seen from Alexander, uh, the why, what and how. So that's the way where we want to talk to you and where we understand where are you and what the best approach for you. This is for free, so it's a two to three hours discussion with you uh, in a discussion mode uh, where we show you some things and uh, ask you some questions. Okay, it's back again and ask you some questions uh, to know from our side and to give you an impression how, how we proceed. Yeah, that's, uh, as we said, that's a, um, a session which can be done uh, with Teams or Zoom or something uh, remote, or we can do it, uh, of course, in your offices. And uh, that's the first step and that is for free. If we go a step further, um, uh, then we, 
you should decide, do you go the way with us and uh, what is the right package for you? So we have created uh, several packages where we have a, a starter and small package with, which takes an overall timeline of two weeks. We have a medium package which is around six weeks and large package between ten, eight and 12 weeks. And finally, a sub rise version package and the difference between L and uh, rise version is, as you've seen, uh, rise, um, includes uh, more uh, products from the Signavio portfolio where we can run deeper insights and that's the reason why we say okay it's a special rice version because you don't have to purchase uh, this software tools for this um, analysis package uh, we, we can use that and it takes a little bit longer because we're getting more results so these are the four packages and if we have uh, no please stay on that line um, as you see Depending on the package, the main uh, difference between the packages, of course, is the duration of the packages on the one hand. Uh, the other thing is uh, what we look at. So um, as you've seen uh, here, if you look at the uh, process, uh, processes as a line of business and value drivers, uh, we have a maximum of seven processes, six lines of businesses, and 12 uh, value drivers. Uh, that's one thing. So in the small package, we analyze less of them uh, than in the large package, and the medium package is in between. Uh, the large, uh, the small, and the medium package does not include the S&P system scan. Uh, and uh, that's the main difference. And if you go uh, one slide further, you see the overlook of these packages. Uh, another slide, uh, next slide, please. Um, the starter and the small package, um, to, just to show you the difference. Uh, this is uh, free of charge, um, still in this quarter. Um, we starting uh, with uh, um, this business process discovery, as you've seen from Ale from from Johannes, and we start with the order to cash or procurement to pay process. Uh, we take either finance or sales or procurement as line of business, uh, taking uh, one value driver. Then we do a run a technical interview. Uh, we were doing a workshop with the results we have found out of that. And then we give you a short uh, hybrid uh, or um, team-based um, result presentation where we show you the top findings and key business benefits. That's for free. So this something similar. Go to the next slide. Uh, is a sm small and medium package. You see the difference is it takes a little bit longer um, and we um, analyze more processes. So we do all the uh, seven end-to-end -end processes, but also two lines of business, three max uh, value drivers, and uh, then uh, all the presentation of the top findings and key business results. So this is about uh, five, 5K euros. And so just a slide ahead. Next slide, please. Uh, the medium package, you see there we go in six lines of business and all processes, it's the same like before, but the difference here is uh, that we uh, take all the lines of business. Uh, what these lines of business are, are described uh, on one of the first slides I showed to you. And um, we and uh, the final result presentation, which will be probably on site, uh, is much more deeper. That's not only uh, one or two hours, it's half a work day where we do the presentation and the discussion, discussion in a kind of workshop with you. Uh, next slide, please. Same as uh, the package large. So there we run uh, the SP system scan uh, on top and we do all of the functionality and uh, features which are part of uh, Signavio business discovery. Uh, we run all seven end-to-end -end processes, all lines of business, all value drivers, and all automation potentials. On top, the S&P system scan, and uh, then uh, and that makes sense for you if you say, okay, 
I decided not to go into a brownfield approach, as Alexander stated very early in the um, in the session. That's nothing we recommend you. But if you say okay, uh, probably I can reuse some of the things uh, I have in my current ECC system. Or if you have things where you say okay, um, I'm still on an old enhancement pack. Enhancement pack five, for example, is an enhancement pack. A customer we're discussing exactly this approach is having right now and uh, the business partner uh, integration which he wants to run before he has a lot of uh, preparation projects where we say okay as uh, Richard uh, showed you a little bit earlier uh, these are projects which you can combine into one project with the uh, SNP crystal bridge tool and if you say, okay, you have these things or other things which are quite common, if you say, okay, I want to use my S4 transformation uh, to harmonize different SAP systems, consolidate them in one, that is the typical approach for uh, going uh, with this uh, SNP crystal bridge approach, which we embed in our portfolio. And that is a way where we say, okay, then choose this package L because what you invest more in time and money to run this uh, pre-project uh, is something you will save many, many times as a project after. On the one hand, by reducing time of the project, reducing risk in the project, and finally saving money because you don't have to run several projects in parallel or before you go to the S4 transformation. We try to find out uh, during this approach and, of course, uh, the next steps, uh, what is the best approach for you and which of these projects can be uh, combined in one. So. This is the large project, uh, is a large package, and if we go to the next slide, we have finally the surprise version. Um, the difference here is that we uh, can use um, business process insights. You see it here in the second column. Uh, the BPI is a part of the RISE uh, um, portfolio you uh, can use for that. And uh, also SNP is part of that thing, so and that's a, a package which takes the longest time. And uh, there we do a, a pricing, not as a package, we just do an individual pricing on that. What I want to say with that, and that's the end of the, uh, our presentation, uh, we help you to start your business transformation journey. Um, so. We offer you just talk to us, come to us, talk to us about your situation. Uh, we are uh, arranging a meeting with you, uh, looking at your situation in the step one where we do the analysis of the three W's. And then let's decide how we proceed, whether you want to proceed with us, with one of the packages, or if you have an individual uh, approach which you are wanting to run uh, this is our offer for you and if you have other things and if we can help you on your journey as a team with uh, SAP Signavio and SNP talk to us and uh, yeah we are ready to start thank you very much for your time and uh, yeah I hope uh, if there is anything uh, coming up or if you're interested in that uh, please contact us on the other hand uh, we will send out within the next two or three days uh, all what I said means, on the one hand, the link to the uh, video, the recording, and uh, to the slides. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, see you next time, and looking forward to hear from you. Bye-bye.